Hey guys, how are you doing? Today we're going to talk about what it means to say the law of demand or the demand curve. So far you've learned concepts like indifference curve, budget constraints, what it means for a consumer to have a utility. Make sure you understand and are very clear on that. And in the previous video I introduced you to some mathematical concepts that you need to know for you to be able to understand what we're going to do in the next few uh, videos. So make sure you're clear on that and then you can proceed with what we're going to learn here. So for example, why is it that when you go watch a cricket match, uh, the ticket for a test match is much cheaper than the ticket you pay for a one day match? Or why is it that when you go get gasoline filled in your cars, the price fluctuates on a hour to hour basis? At no, you know, if you, go to, if you go get gas filled over a couple of days, the price will vary a lot. Or why is it that the price of uh, roses rises significantly the day of the Valentine's Day? Right? So th these are questions that you can use simple understanding of demand and supply to be able to answer these questions. So you know, just for your reference, if you want to buy roses for your boyfriends or girlfriends, make sure you do so a couple of days before Valentine's Day, otherwise you'll be paying a higher price. So what we've learned so far in the behavior of consumers is that there is a relationship between price of a good and how much we buy of good one. Right? So make sure you're clear on all the terminologies and, and the way we uh, uh, have the notations here. So in, in a few videos before we talked about if the price of good one goes up, there are two things that happen when we are trying to analyze what happens to the amount of good one we are going to buy. Right? So we called those substitution effect and income effect. So that's the two concepts we talked about in the, in the a couple of slides before. What they are referring to, and I'll briefly recap it, but if you don't understand, make sure you go watch that video. Substitution effect says if the price of a good changes, and what we talked about was if the price of good one goes down, uh, the two things happens. One is good one in relation to another good becomes cheaper. So you'll buy more of good one because the price of good one has gone down and the price of the other good has not changed. The second thing that happens is that if you look at in terms of your purchasing power, if one good becomes cheaper, your income indirectly goes up because now you have more money to spend on other things. So that's what we talked about between substitute and income effect and make sure you're clear on that. So what you've seen many times is the budget line, right? So that's nothing new uh, here. So if price of good one goes down, what we can say if you understand substitution and income effect is that, that, that your budget line is going to pivot outwards like this. And I'll briefly explain if if, if good one becomes cheaper and you want to buy nothing but good one, you'll be able to buy more of good one. But if you want to buy nothing but good two, you'll still be able to afford only that same amount as before because the price of good two is not changing. Right? So make sure you understand why it's pivoting the way it is. So if, we, if this was our optimal bundle before, if price of good one goes down, due to both of these effects, the line will pivot outward and now your optimal bundle is going to be somewhere outside this budget line. So what you should be able to, to gather from all this information here is that if, if the price of good one goes down, we will want to buy more of good one. And that's what the law of demand, which we're going to drive in just a second, is going to be referring to. All right, so before I get that, uh, let me just give you two parts of a market. So a market is anywhere where you go and buy things and I, I, somebody is selling things to you as well. So it can be a virtual place, like if you go buy things on Amazon, it can be your local grocery store, or it can be anything. Any, any place where somebody is buying and somebody is selling is a market. There are two components of a market. One is consumers, that's us, when we want to buy things or services. And then there are producers who are selling. We will get to the producer part in the next chapter, which will probably be in three or four videos. Uh, we've been talking about consumers a lot. We've only focused on the demand side so far, but we'll, put, we'll get to that in the next uh, couple of chapters. All right, so demand, uh, and let me define it, and then, then uh, I'll, I'll do an example as well. Quantity demanded is the amount of a good that we are willing to buy at a given price. So referring back to the previous uh, uh, you know, couple of slides ago, if the price of good one went down, we will want to buy more of good one. That's quantity demanded. How much more are we you know, going to buy? And the law of demand states what we've already concluded is that there is going to be an inverse or a negative relationship between the price of a good and how much we want to buy. So that's very important and you make sure you remember that is that the law of demand states that if the price of a good goes down, we will want to buy more. And conversely, if the price of a good goes up, we will buy less. Right? So make sure you understand those, those concepts. So let's do a numerical example and then I'll put it graphically as well. So now when we draw everything from here on in the next few videos, we are going to have quantity of good one on the x-axis and price of good one on the vertical axis. 
So we moved away from looking at a combination of bundle that we've been doing so far, and now we're going to analyze a lot more thoroughly how much more are we going to buy of a particular good due to all of these factors that you will be introduced to. So if this is an equation given to you, uh, you know, you already should know that uh, quantity that we buy is a function of price. Make sure you understand that. So if this is an example of an equation. Now we are going to be able to use that equation and graph it on here. Right? So let's just use that equation. If the price of the good is 0, the amount that we are going to be willing to buy is 10. So that's your intercept there. If Now you have to think about what at what price will you buy 0 quantity. So if the price is 5, then the quantity you buy is 10 minus 10, which is 0. So if the price goes to 5 or any amount above 5, you will buy 0. And then for every amount of price below 5, you will buy some positive quantity. And now if you connect these two dots, that is your demand curve. All right, so in the previous slide, we said there's a negative relationship between price and quantity. Now we have graphed, graphed that, is that the price of a good and the amount we buy is going to be inversely related. Right, and just another point of this 5, another way to figure that out is you divide this by the uh, coefficient of p, and you get the same number 5. All right, so that's the, what the demand curve refers to. So the demand curve is just a graphical representation of the relationship between price of a good and how much we are willing and able to buy. Right, so this is just the definition of what you just saw here. All right, so make sure you understand what the definition means. And like I said, it shows that how much are we willing to buy if prices change, and that relationship is negative. Right, make sure that's a very important uh, concept in relation to the demand curve. So let's look at a, an example here. So we have uh, a, a, a consumer called Rishabh, and we are looking at ice cream cones that he's willing to buy. So on the x-axis, you have quantity of ice cream cones that Rishabh is willing and able to buy. And on the vertical axis, you have the price. Right, I've denoted the price in dollars, uh, but that's not important. Here, I've given you all his possibilities. Right, the price is, as the price goes up, you know Rishabh is going to be buying less of ice cream cones because there's a negative relationship between price and quantity. So these are numbers I've made up. This representation is just called a schedule, right? So you've written the relationship between price and how much quantity that Rishabh is willing to buy. Now we're going to use that and graph it here. So let's just graph each point individually. If the price goes down, as it goes down, I'm going to be looking at each of these points. And once you connect all of these points, the last point being if the price is 0, he's going to be buying 12 ice cream cones. Uh, and if you connect all those dots, you get what is the demand curve. It's the same as what I have uh, had in the, a couple of slides ago. So make sure you're very clear on a few concepts. What, what is on the axis here? What is the demand curve? And what does it mean? All right, so that, that's going to conclude today's video. Uh, just to quickly recap, we've moved from when we talked about bundles of goods and how, how consumer chooses a bundle of goods. Now we are analyzing each good in more depth. So we're asking, OK, we have one good. And moving forward, I'm going to use burgers as an example. And I'll leave you with a thought before I'm done here. So we're going to say, OK, you know, if you want to go buy burgers, how do we change our behavior in the quantity of burgers we buy based on various factors? In this uh, video, you've learned that if the price of burgers goes down, you'll buy more. And if the price of burgers goes up, you'll buy less. Moving forward, in the next video, I'll leave you with a question. And we'll stop here, is think about what else will make you want to buy more or less burgers? So there are various factors, and we'll get into that, each of them. But think about it before we get to the next video. What, what, what will make you buy, other than the price of burgers, either more or less of that good? All right, so uh, that's going to conclude today's video. And we'll be getting into more of demand-related concepts in the next video. See you then.